Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, episode 54. This episode is an interview with artist, resident of Grand Cayman Island, and Jennifer's cousin, Pat Nicholson. You know, the interview aside, I think the real story here is the Communication Diva's unwavering and profound commitment to bringing you meaningful, high-quality content. Imagine... Jen traveling all the way from Canada to the Caribbean in January just to get this interview. Kind of leaves a lump in your throat, doesn't it? My name is Jen Swanson, and I'm the host and creator of the Communication Diva podcast. This podcast explores communication in many forms, and the purpose of it is to both share great communicators with you of all different sorts and types, and to talk to you about communication skills and techniques so that you might learn something, so that you might be entertained, and to help you improve your own communications both at home and in the workplace. And hopefully, after all of that, you will have some improvement in your relationships with others as a result. If this is your first time listening, welcome to Communication Diva. If this is your 54th time listening, welcome back. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your life to join me here. January has been very busy with my trip to Vegas, where I was fortunate to speak on a panel at the New Media Expo conference. And then a short few days later, Scott and I left for the Caribbean for an actual, real, relaxing vacation. It's been quite some time since we had a restful kind of a holiday that didn't involve conferences or work. So, um, it was it was wonderful, and for some inexplicable reason, um, it was the first time that anyone from my side of the family had been down to see my second cousin and her boys, who have lived there for something like forty years. So I have no idea why we haven't done this, but you know, life is kind of like that. We get caught up in our own corners of the world and. Sometimes for financial reasons or family reasons or time and commitment reasons, we don't venture very far. So we were fortunate to have some aeroplane points that were going to expire So on an airplane. So we were able to use the points to fly and we were able to stay with uh, my cousin, which helped with the expenses. And so we thought, you know what, it's cold here in January Let's uh, let's go get a little bit of sun. So there you go. This trip took us two days each way to get there. Um, it was quite a bit of a challenge on the way there because a flight got completely canceled unbeknownst to us and they were going to reschedule us three days later, which was going to cut seriously into our vacation, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was a little bit of a nightmare for a while. But there was one young check-in agent in particular that I wanted to give a shout out to. His name is Malcolm, and I think his last name is McAvoy, but I'm not sure. Uh, We had a slip with his name on it and lost that paper somewhere in our transit. Um, He works for United Airlines, and he was at the check-in desk at 4.30 a.m., in San Francisco on January 16th, 2013. And so if anybody knows Malcolm, (laughs) please give us a shout uh, because he was absolutely wonderful in helping to sort out this canceled flight and this completely messed up itinerary. He actually spent an hour and a half of his shift working on our problem. And because of his hard work, he was able to get us to Grand Cayman Island Uh, five hours later than we were scheduled to fly, but at least the same day because the changed itinerary had us going three days later. And nothing against San Francisco. We love San Francisco. We went and had dinner at uh, the Stinking Rose while we were waiting to get on the next flight. 
and uh, and we love San Francisco, but we really didn't plan on spending three days there. We wanted to be three days in on the beach. So Malcolm did a fantastic job. And in fact, the entire team that was on that morning at United was fantastic. Every few minutes, someone came and said, "Are you? have you been looked after? Uh, once they knew we'd been standing there for many, many minutes, uh, people were humorous. They were kind. They really seemed concerned. They stopped to listen to our story. And they were really, really good customer service representatives. So if anybody from United Airlines is listening to this, that group of people that you have in the airport at SFO, particularly working on January 16th, 2013, between 4.30 and 6.30 a.m., they really deserve some recognition. You have excellent people there. Keep them. <laughs> they know how to communicate. So I just wanted to give that shout out. And I really would appreciate if anybody knows uh, who what, what Malcolm's last name is, who they are, uh, to give us a, a drop us an email uh, at communicationdiva.com and, uh, and let us know because I'd love to send a letter to his employees, to or employers, pardon me, to uh, to give him some kudos. Okay, so now today's episode is an interview with my cousin Patricia Nicholson about how she communicates her vision of the color and beauty of where she lives through the art that she produces. Pat has some of her artworks in the museum in Georgetown on Grand Cayman Island. She has her work in several art shops and galleries around the island. She also ships uh, items, uh, greeting cards and prints around the world to anyone wanting to purchase some of her Caymanian imagery. And uh, we'll give some contact information for Pat at the end of this episode so that if you would like to enjoy some of her work in your home, you will be able to. I'm also going to put some uh, pictures of some of her work on the website at communicationdiva.com. So come over and check those out because the colors are spectacular and they do certainly communicate some of the beauty of the sea and the flora and fauna of Grand Cayman Island. So here is Pat and her story. Okay, so here I am sitting in the den of artist and my cousin, Pat Nicholson, on Grand Cayman Island. And I can tell you we've been having a a fantastic time here in the sun and uh, decided that Pat would be an interesting person to share with you. She is uh, an artist who uses different mediums, and, uh, and I thought that it might be fun to have a conversation with her. So welcome, Pat. Thank you for being here, and welcome to my home. Glad to have you and Scott. <laughs> it's been just so lovely to get away. It's January, and it's three degrees at home in Vancouver, BC, Canada, and rainy and cold, and it's so beautiful and hot here, so we're glad to be here. <laughs> so, Pat, I'm, we've, we're surrounded by your art in your house, and it's lovely, and we've been all throughout the island and, and seen your work all over the place in all different spots. And uh, before we talk about your art specifically, how did you end up coming to live on this beautiful island? Well, I guess that's an adventure too. Uh, my husband was, my late husband was in the scuba diving business and we decided in 1969 that this would be an amazing place to come for a honeymoon. And so we did. In 1960, February 1969, we came for a honeymoon and about a year and two months later we moved back and have been more or less permanently residing in the Cayman Islands ever since. We had a couple of years back in Canada, but the lure of the beach sand and the water was far too much for us to leave, <laughs> to to take, just accept this cold winters. Yeah, no kidding. It's absolutely gorgeous here. But 1969, I understand there wasn't a whole lot here on Grand Cayman Island. No, there was very little, especially compared to today. In 1969, we had three flights a week, and we had two a supply boat at once every two weeks. There was about 7,000 people on the island as opposed to 50,000 now. It was a very different place. Mm. And from the things that we were uh, hearing about in the the museum today, we we did some... uh, 
some touring around into different museums and things today, and uh, and it sounds like it was not that long ago that it became this tourist mecca that it is today. It's a tourist mecca, but it's also financial. The financial world is very big here, as everybody who reads a crime book or something else will, <laughs> will hear about. Not necessarily all true, but... Um, the explosion, it's a very safe place to come. It has, it's well linked between the U.S. and Canada and even now Europe. And it's, it's a safe place for people to come and have a vacation. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of sandy beach and there's other, also other family oriented activities here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you raised your kids here too. Yeah. My two boys are here and their families. And it's just, it's really is, it really has become home. Mm -hmm. That's great. So you came here, but you weren't coming here as an artist. You were doing other things. I came here and I was working in a bank. And then I worked for for a short while, part-time in an art shop. And then I was the admin office administrator for a developer for 20 years. Mm. And it was, but it was back in about 1989 when my husband passed away that I really got involved in art. And my first love was ceramics. And I was doing quite a lot of ceramics and reasonably successfully, but not commercially. And in 19, sorry, sorry, in 2004, we were hit by Hurricane Ivan and the island was devastated. Mm. Along with it was my kiln. Mm. And, but I just had to have something to do. And a friend of mine very kindly showed me the basics of batik. And I just fell in love. I fell in love with the, the surprise of the color, the availability of incentive on the island, both from the flora and the fauna and the fish in the sea. It just seemed a natural median to turn into, to turn to. So, so the hurricane took away the kiln. And, and because of that, you turned to something different, but you still needed that um, way of communicating through your hands and through color. And talk about that a bit. Um, I think I just wanted to express my own fantasies. If, if you look at my work, it's certainly not a photograph. Um, I have a friend who's a really good successful photographer on the island and she always says to me pat but it doesn't quite look like this <laughs> and i say no it doesn't but it does to me this is these are my fantasy fish this is my my way of expressing what i see through my own eyes even my you know the different colors and the wonderful blues and hues of, of the ocean and the sky mm -hmm. yeah so for somebody who isn't familiar with batik can you explain what it is Batik is a process of using wax and a dye resist. It's a long process. It's not a difficult process. It takes takes a fair amount of patience. You just choose your design. You choose the color that you want for white. You block it out with wax. Then you choose another color, and once you have that color, you block that out with wax, and then you just build dye and wax and dye and wax until you're finished. You do a final dye bath to give you the... Anybody who's familiar with Batik knows it always has a little light black or different color lines that that are through it. Um, and then you iron it. And then you have the big reveal. Has Have I put, you know, have the colors come true? Have they spilled over? Do I have dots in the right places? It's it's a really fun thing to do. It really is. So it's on, what kind of cloth is it on? It's on a very, very, um, I use cotton, mm -hmm. it's, which is different from silk batik. I use, I use a very uh, untreated cotton with a very, very fine weave to it. Mm -hmm. And it comes from a company that makes cotton for batik. Oh, specifically for that. Yeah. Okay, so then it must be exciting and um, a bit nerve-wracking if you spent all sorts of time on this to to iron it. And so, what do you iron? Where does the wax go? The wax just evaporates. Well, actually, you want you um, you iron it onto newspaper and then you iron it onto paper towel. Oh, okay. And the wax is absorbed. And the final thing is you rinse it in mineral spirits, which takes off off the uh, residual wax. And then you're left with the stiffer cloth. Yeah, fairly stiff. Um, although the more the more wax you take out, the less the less stiff it is. Mm. And then you can frame it. 
Okay. So I frame mine. Mine are all framed. Mm -hmm. Or you can turn it into a cushion. Mm -hmm. uh, you could, if you use long fabric, you could use a scarf or a tablecloth. It's very, it's very, you know, the Balinese and the people from Java have been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're familiar with it in sarongs and, and beachwear. But this is, I do mine specifically for hung art or I do a, a series of greeting cards as well, note cards. Mm -hmm. and, and many of your pieces have been turned into prints. Prints, yeah. I have a, a fellow I work with who's a very, very good photographer, and he does prints of all my work from which I can do either um, G-clays on watercolor paper or G-clays on canvas. And then another, another company on the island uh, produces my note cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, they seem to be all over the place. It's wonderful. I'm really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> or perseverance. I don't know quite what it is, you know. No, but I have um, a couple of the art galleries here have the, mu the museum in Cayman carries my work, um, as well as one of the interior design places on the island. And mm -hmm. they've used theirs. They've used some of my work in some of their installations, which is very flattering. Right. Well, it's so so lively and bright, and the colors are definitely the Caribbean color, I think. Yeah, it's it's the color that um, that attracts me. I, you know, I'll, I'll do my fish on on a surface, and I'll think, well, maybe I'll make these real rock beauties. But no, it would be so much more interesting if I turned the black to yellow and, you know, turn them around. And maybe I was going to do a blue fish, but it ends up a purple fish. It's just the whimsy that takes you when you when you start to do it. Yeah. So what's it like to do what you absolutely love? It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Um, I retired from 20 years with a developer about almost two years ago now, and my choices were to go and find another office job, which just made me shudder, or to give this a whirl. And it's hard work. It's not easy at my age to become a starving artist, but it's, <laughs> but it's good fun, you know. And so far, so far, I've been very fortunate, and hopefully the next few years will take me further so I can stay out of the office. Yeah, yeah, because this this just seems to be so much more life-giving. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's more life-giving for me. It's more life-giving, I hope, for the people that, you know, enjoy my work and for the places I go to see if they'd like to carry it. There's always a, you know, you meet different people, and yeah, it's it's very life changing. Have you ever found out um, how far your work has gone? No, 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 I haven't. But I have had people say, "Oh, I saw my, you know, I sent this to my aunt Jenny in Ireland or somebody in France or something." So I know that it's crept into different places. It's uh, it it's sure lovely to see, and it brightens everything up. And uh, we're lucky enough to be taking some cards home with us. Uh -huh. I'm excited about that. Um, this this idea of branching out and doing something that you love, um, was it scary? It was scary, but it wasn't, it wasn't, because I really, really like what I was doing, and I thought, it really can't be that bad, and it, it's worth a shot. Yeah. And it's proved, you know, and then it was... Um, the fellow who does my who does my prints, he said, "Oh no, you need to you need." To, he was doing them on watercolor paper. He said, "You need to try these on canvas," and they they turned out to be, whoever thought a thing that was meant to be on a piece of cloth would look well transferred, photographed, and put on canvas, but they look wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's been it's been very educational the whole way around. Because you've had to learn about the business part of it too, I'm sure. Yeah, that's kind of the the hard part. Considering I was I've been in business most of my life, when I become became my own business manager, I find I'm not quite as good at it for myself as I was <laughs> for the people that were the people I worked for. But I'm learning. I learned to get a bill book and not remember what I dropped off and which gallery and who had what. But it's been fun. Oh, good. Been and fun. what kind of connections have you made with people on the island because of this? Um, I've become well ac acquainted with the people at the National Museum. Um, Again, um, Kathy Church's photo center has been amazing with my prints and um, my work is at the Ritz Carlton Hotel. I've met, you know, I've just expanded, you know, Pure Art Gallery, the Kennedy Gallery, all carry my work in Cayman. That's great. So yeah. now you call yourself an artist. Yes, I do. That's great. And how did that feel when you first had to do that? It felt wonderful. I had business cards made and they say artist on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not office administrator. <laughs> That's great. What advice would you have for somebody who was 
wondering or thinking or dreaming about doing what it is they love to do that's a creative way of communicating, but are just a little hesitant. I'd say just do it. The most frustrating thing I have people say to me is, oh, I couldn't do that. I have not a bone of artistic ability in me. That's not true. Everybody does. You just have to, you have to try. I always thought I couldn't draw until I started to do batik. And then every time I do a batik, I can draw something a little bit better than I did before. I would never call myself a landscape artist, but what I, what I've learned to draw for batik is just, I've just, just do it. Yeah. 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 So just do it. Just go for it and see what happens. Yeah. Just go for it. <laughs> And you're communicating your, your passion and your imagination and all of the rest of that to who knows who. Yeah, and if you just want to do something, just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just dreaded the thought of going back into an office and starting something all over again. And the thought of just having the opportunity to give this a whirl has been worth every bit of it. Mm -hmm. That's a great story. <laughs> Thank you. If people wanted to find you, where could they reach you? They could reach me at um, my email address, which is patnick, P-A-T-N-I-C, at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. Dot K-Y for? Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands. I'm going to put Pat's um, email address on the website at www.communicationdiva.com and we're also going to put a picture of Pat and pictures of some of her pieces there and if you are interested I'm sure that she would figure out a way to get the uh, piece to you. I sure would. We have got a very good postal service in the Cayman <laughs> Islands. So. I was looking at all the fancy stamps when mm -hmm. I was at one of the museums today. Yeah. Yeah. It okay, was no problem. It was great. Okay, well thank you so much for this conversation, Pat. And uh and I really hope that you come to the website and check out her work and uh and see a little bit of Grand Cayman Paradise. Thanks, Jennifer. This was fun. So there was my interview with my second cousin Pat Nicholson on Grand Cayman Island and talking about her work with Batik and how she made a, a leap of faith and jumped into doing what she loves to do by producing art and sharing it with all sorts of people and uh, and it really is bright and beautiful so come on over again to www.communicationdiva.com see some of what Pat does uh, send her an email and uh, and let us know too what you thought of this episode Leave us a comment in the comments section. Come on over to iTunes and do a review. Talk to me on Facebook or Twitter, and I would love to hear your feedback. Next week, we're going to be talking about self-talk and the things that we say to ourselves that sometimes are really not that helpful. So I hope you come back and Stay tuned to communicationdiva.com. Thank you so much again for taking the time out of your busy life to listen. I really appreciate it. And thank you. Until next